Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to a brand new Pro Evolution Soccer 2020 Master League with your host Spoonie Pizzas. Today we're going to take over AS Roma. If you want to see the first game, jump to episode 2. But if you want to see the sort of setup, the tactics I'm going to employ, some of the other stuff I do in the background, then stay tuned for episode 1. So, diving into the club team lineup, we're going to go to Sierra A and pick out AS Roma. Manager, oof, this is a tough one, but I'm going to go for Romario. I've been Johan Cruyff, um, I don't think I've been Diego Maradona, but nah, too many, too many drugs for my liking. Let's go for Romario. I'm going to leave him in the suit, shirt, or sportswear. I think he looks better in a suit. There we go. Romario taking over AS Roma. We're going to leave the transfer frequency at normal, the negotiation difficulty at normal, starting budget at normal, enable first transfer windows. Yep. Annual salary. Happy with that. Um, I was going to select legend, but it's because this is a fresh install because of the, I'm using the IPM mod, which gives me the ultra realistic gameplay. So it's going to have to be superstar for the first few games. And then I'll knock it up to legend, 10 minutes worth of match time. And I'm going to be using pounds, great British pounds. So here we are going to be setting our objectives. How about we aim to win the league? And I'm going to say, nope, we should aim to make it to the UEFA Champions League. I think that's, you know, top four would be a realistic um, aim for Roma. I think winning the league is possible, but it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. So we've set our expectations with our board of directors. Now it's time to face the press. Your league title chances, I think we're going to say we need to respect the other teams. You know, don't be too cocky about this. What style of football do you want to play this season? Uh, I'm going to put on a show for that. Well, I hope so anyway. Uh, wait till you see my uh, see my tactics that I've got lined up to use for AS Roma. So, welcome to the Master League. Yep, we know what we're doing. So, the first thing I do is straight into the game plan. Um, now, with my best formation and tactics, I look at the team I've got here and I put them in the right positions, right? and set of tactics that would probably suit those players. With a Mass League, I do something slightly different. I take the formation and tactic that I want to play, and then I recruit players to fit, fit and build that formation. So I am going to be using <laughs> this. You're like, oh my God, how many different tactics? Yeah, so I've got three preset tactics on. Each one is a fluid formation, so there's a lot going on. Um, but basically, it is my Sheffield United's overlapping centre-backs. So this is the main one I'm going to use. Um, so my preset tactics one for main offensive is a 5-3-2 out of possession of the ball. But when we have possession of the ball, you're going to see it then becomes a... 3-5-2 but with those attacking fullbacks there's going to be a lot of overlapping and overloading on in the wide areas leaving Fazio who's not the quickest at the back so I can already see where the weaknesses are so Smalling is not a great right back so that is one position we need to need to work on midfield wise I think we've got sort of plenty of options creativity and defensive awareness and and uh, and tact. So I think, you know, the mid central midfielder, we've got plenty of cover at the minute. The wide positions, yep, we have decent wide men and decent backup as well in Cliver and Perez. Up front, we've got Dzeko, who's going to be an absolute beast, and Kalinic. But after that, we probably need maybe one or two strikers so we need a right back. Um, we've got good left back cover. 
I've got good right back cover as well. We have got Zappa Costa, but you got to remember that Smalling is a centre back out of possession of the ball, and when he has possession of the ball, he becomes a right back. Okay, so let's have a look at the tactics or the attacking instructions. So possession, short pass, central attacking area, flexible positioning, four for support range, all out defence, wide aggressive, five for defensive line, eight for compactness, centering targets, and attacking fullbacks. So, like I said, those there's going to be a lot of overlapping. Um, we're going to suffer because we're using an outrageous formation and I don't think there's anyone who can captain the side who has playmaker role which boosts the team spirit. No, they don't. Obviously, if I had the captaincy over any of these players, that team spirit might be boosted. When it comes to corner takers, um, I'm going to go with... Kolarov. I like his kicking power. I do like his kicking power. So I'm going to put Kolarov. And I do like Kolarov as, as a right back as well. So, players to join the attack. Yeah, let's put, let's put just Fazio at the time being. We've identified the positions we need to strengthen. We've set our tactics out. So, that's part one done. Happy with that. Next thing to do is whack on the autosave. Amount of times I've started a season, done all the preparation, and then forgot to bloody enable the autosave or even save the game at all. So you end up playing a few games and you've done all that work and it's all lost the next time you log in. So next thing we want to do is set up the training just to make sure it looks okay. So what does okay look like? Well, we want our centre back not to be an offensive fullback. Um, I think the build up will be good. Offensive fullback, Smalling is going to be playing as a right back, so I'm happy with that. Kolarov, I want him to go forward, so offensive fullback. Prolific winger, yep, creative playmaker. Yeah. I think prolific winger is probably going to be better. For Perotti, box to box, creative midfielder, whole player, yep, goal poacher, target man, yep. Prolific winger, prolific winger, classic number 10, whole player. Destroy. I like some of these to have different um, attributes in the field, just to give you um, just give you some options. This guy is going to be a offensive fullback as well. Extra front man. Yeah, that's not too bad. I don't mind a centre back being an extra front man. Plays a little bit further forward than a, than a build up player, as per my play styles video. Santon, let's make him a offensive fullback. Sapa Costa. And there we go. So those are the fullbacks sorted. Offensive fullback. Class number 10. Okay, I think we're good. So that's the training setup. Next up is the skill training. One of these, this is one of the ones I always tend to forget about. Now, what I do is I always jump straight down to heading and look at these down here. See if there's anyone I can train on any of these, because these are usually quite good. Uh, but there's no one. And I just realized that there's no one for anything because this new patch that I'm using, all the players are pretty maxed out on skills. I'm not sure what the reasoning was behind that. But I think it just allows your players to do more things. I don't know. I don't know the reasoning behind it. But all I know is this this patch does actually rock. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna question it. So we've got our training setup. We've got our skills training setup. Don't bother. I don't tend to bother with the youth team training. I've got to admit. Um, then I go straight into the game negotiations. Actually, before we go to the negotiations, let's set the budget because this is another thing I tend to forget about. So diving into the budget settings, set all these to receive as salary budget. And then the spot one, contract options, payments, tr pay with transfer budget. Because what you find is the salary budget's really low and your transfer budget ain't, you know, gets really high. So at least if you're receiving all these as salary budget, boost the salary and you can switch them around as uh, if you're if you're short on transfer budget but generally it's the salary budget that goes out the window first so contract negotiations are really important so now we go into team management and negotiations let's go into my team now this is a 
bit of a ball ache, I guess, but um, it's got to be done. So I'm going to keep both of my, um, yeah, two keepers. So I always set those to refusal. Any players that I want to keep or will probably keep for the first, I don't know, 20 games, 30 games, I always set all these players to refusal. Why do I do this? Is because then I don't get offers for players I don't want to sell, but I will get offers for players that I do want to sell. So it's important to set these to refusal. Anyone you're thinking about keeping until I get like a feel for them and um, know what I'm going to be doing with them. At that point, that's when I sort of go, actually, he doesn't really fit my style. I really don't like this guy. I don't like the feel of him. Then you can offload him. Now, I've got quite a few left backs here. Um, he's 26, 28. Colour of 34. Let's have a look. Lofted pass. But they got pinpoint crossing. Neither of those got pinpoint crossing. Nice. Not even Colorado has got pinpoint crossing. Interesting. I thought he, I thought he would have, but I know his kicking power is going to be really good. Yeah, ninety. So that's really good for whipping balls into the box. Um, Santon hasn't got that good kicking power, so he's going to be the one out of these two to be dropped. Plus, he's really slow as well. So him, I'm happy. Now, what's the difference between transfer list and ticking these two? Um, I tend to tick this one if I want a good price. I'm, I'm happy to wait. If I'm not happy to wait, I need a quick sell. I'll just leave transfer list on. But if I'm looking for a better buy, then I'll enable this one here as well. So a little bit more money, but I may have to wait until I sell. Um, Juan Jesus. I like his acceleration and speed. Really good. Perez. Yeah, he's not too bad, but... Have a backup right back. I think I've got a few. I've also got Kaz Dorp down there as well. Let's hang out for a good offer for him. This guy can go. Don't like. He's only 22, but physical contact. Nah, I think he's got to go. These lowly goalkeepers, the youngsters, they can go 22 years old, only 66 rated. It's not worth keeping. Him. Um, in fact, most of these can go now down the bottom. Quick sells and free up some room for signings. Can always release if, if necessary but next thing to do is dive into the negotiations set up the scouting so we're going to look for forwards now there's certain players that i want to look for so i'm going to look for france for some strikers i'm going to look i won't mind strengthening the centre back positions because we have got three of them. Again, I'll look for France and sort of still developing. Again, I've got someone in mind, Kamara, <laughs> who I'd like. So let's see if these bring any any rewards. Um, and lastly, we need sort of a defender right back desperately. So. The first position is definitely the right back position that we need to we need to fix. Okay, so I've narrowed down my search by using some of the filters and I'm going to put an offer for Joe Gomez from Liverpool. It's got really good stats. The ones I'm looking at, physical contact, balance. Um, balance is really good for like holding off players and and just overall um, sort of shielding of the ball when you have the ball. Speed, acceleration, lofted pass at over 75. Good dribbling as well. Didn't, didn't look for that particularly, but that's always good to have. And he's also got good ball winning and aggression. 
as well as a decent form stat. So, and another key one for me was the pinpoint crossing. As for his sort of suitability, possession, yep. Short pass, yep. Central attacking area, yep. Flexible positioning. Frontline pressure, no. Central penning area and aggressive pressing. So, sort of a mixed bag there for me in terms of how he fits my tactics, but it's pretty good. So I'm going to offer all of the money. So we don't have to worry about Liverpool accepting. So we're going to breach the the gap. But he isn't impressed with our terms. So it looks like we're going to offer, you know, have to offer quite a bit. We're going to release. We're going to lower the release fee, boost the appearance bonus, win bonus, and clean sheet. And I'll set it to a two-year deal. We wanted a one-year deal, but I think we've got to try and lure him in if possible. So that'll be most of my budget gone. Another player on my list is Moussa Dembele from Olympic Lyon. So going to dive in to negotiations. £27 million. It's not a, not a tall ask. He's got some steep annual salary and he doesn't want to budge from that. So again, I'm going to offer a two-year deal. Going to lower the release fee. And boost his contract options. So those are two players that I'd really like. And here we are. The final signing is going to be Marlon. He's earning two and a half million pounds in salary. So that's affordable. His market value is 16 million. But look at that. His release fee is just under 17 million. Absolute steal this is for a really promising young player. So he's got a good impression of our squad. So I'm going to boost his contract to three years. So if we can get that over the line. Maybe we lower the, lower the terms actually. There we go. Just offer him two million. But those bonuses really do encourage players to join. Okay, now we're ready to forward time and see if we can get those negotiations over the line. So three days have passed. That's how long it usually takes to negotiate the deals in PES. Okay, so let's dive into the negotiations. Other teams. And we can see here terms have been finalized with Dembele. And Joe Gomez. And Marlon as well. Um, you know, they're demanding, or well, Marlon's demanding a low contract release fee, as he may have an eye on his next club. That's fine. We can always deal with that when that comes along. And the same for Gomez and Dembele. So I'm actually going to go through ahead with those. Those are definitely positions that I need. Centre back to right back. The two strikers. And they offer something a little bit different as well. To Kalinic and Dzeko. So nice alternatives for sure. So in comes Dembele. Joe Gomez. And Marlon. That does not leave a lot for transfer or salary budgets now. But I think those are three good young signings. You know. So here he is, Moussa Dembele. Being unveiled to the press. And the first thing I'll do is set them to refusal. They're not going to go anywhere. We've had an offer for Villa. So I'm going to accept those terms. Gets a little bit of money in the bank. So the first year as manager of the club is just about to kick off. Do you think you'll be including newcomer Musa Dembele? Um, I might use him. Yeah, I'm going to put I might use him. If I want to win from the get-go, team chemistry is going to be a big factor. 
he may be a newcomer, but I fully expect him to play an important role in our game plan. Okay, that brings us to the end of this episode, ladies and gents. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button. And hopefully you'll join me against the match, a huge game against AC Milan. That's going to be a real acid test, that is. And uh, a game you don't really want to face in the early stages of a season when you're still developing your team spirit. But anyway, hopefully you'll, you'll join me for that one. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves, guys. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.